Hey guys, how are we doing? <laughs> what is up? Um, I started a new pre-sermon tradition as of today. I checked my zipper to make sure that it was not down. So um, thank you, Father, for that, wherever you are. Um, who's had a great time so far? Yeah? Raise your hand if God has taught you something, if God has changed your life, heap it up. If God has restored relationships, if God has done something in you, I want you to look around and see all the hands that are raised. This is powerful. God has done something special this week. You can put your hands down. But I don't want that to go unnoticed. But I also want to recognize a group of people that make it possible. Those are your leaders, your youth pastors, the people sitting to your right and your left that volunteered to come here and serve you guys. So I want you, I want you to look around and find your youth pastor, your youth leader, whoever brought you, whoever's leading you. I want you to thank them because this week would not be possible without them. You're welcome. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. I, I wanna especially thank all of the youth pastors and the youth leaders in this room. You do God's work. Thank you. This is not possible without you. I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna dive in. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for what you've done this weekend and thank you for what you're gonna continue to do. God, I just ask that you would open our hearts, open our minds and help us be ready for this word. Fill me with your spirit, God. We love you. Pray all this in your name, amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm not gonna tell you what this sermon is. I'm not gonna tell you the topic. I'm not gonna tell you what I'm talking about. I'm actually just gonna start reading scripture, okay? So if you're taking notes, and please do, I challenge you to, to get out your notebooks, get out your phones if your leader lets you do that, and, and pay attention to this message, okay? Because you're gonna have to tune in and listen to what God's word says. All right, and I'm gonna clarify what I'm talking about later, but I want you to be engaged. I want you to listen to the Lord and what he says through scripture, okay? Sound good? Yeah, come on, sounds good? Are we ready? Okay, cool. I'm gonna start going rapid fire, I'm reading, okay? This is scripture, this is the word of God. I'm gonna start reading, you can jot them down, they're not gonna be on the screen, so if you have your own Bible, open up with me. If you don't, then just listen. Romans 15:4. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, this is scripture, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Isaiah 55, 10 through 11, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and they do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out, of my, out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Psalms 119, nine through 16, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to God's word. I seek you with all my heart, do not let me stray from your commands, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord, teach me your decrees with my rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Psalm 119, 97 through 112. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it day, all day long. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers for I meditate on your statutes. I have more understanding than the elders for I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil path so that I may obey your word. I have not departed from your laws for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, I hate every wrong that I, Path, your word is a lamp for my feet, I, a light on my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much, preserve my life, Lord, 
according to your word. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is, is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. We're not done. We got more. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is alive and it is active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of our hearts. Psalms 19, 7 through 11, the law of the Lord is perfect. It is refreshing to the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the, to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, and keeping them there is great reward. Let the prophet, Jeremiah 23, 28 through 29, let the prophet who has a dream about the dream but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with grain, declares the Lord, is not my word like fire and like a hammer that breaks rocks into pieces. Jeremiah 15, 16, when your words came, I ate them. They were joy, they were my joy and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, my son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Colossians 3, 16, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as, your, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. I'm gonna pause here. There's been a common theme in every single one of these verses, and, and I skipped one. Um, may go back and read it. I'm on a time restraint. I really wanted to read all of this, but I get that um, I have limited time. Every single one of these scriptures is talking about scripture itself. Every single one of these passages is, is declaring some truth about the word of God. We see Old Testament and New Testament accounts of what it means to, to dive into the word of God and get truth. So if you haven't picked it up by now, this message is on the importance of scripture. Why do we as believers, as disciples, as followers of Christ, why are we supposed to dive into this book? Emphasis on supposed to because I know that a lot of us do not. Why does my youth leader, why does my youth pastor, why does my, my mom or my dad or my mentor always tell me time and time again that I need to read the Bible every single day? Well, let's keep reading scripture. Let's see what the word of God, truth, says about it. We have Romans, oh wait, no, wrong page. Sorry, guys. Okay. We have 2 Peter 1, 19 through 21. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, through, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So it's inspired by God is what 2 Peter 1, 19 through 21 says. 2 Kings 22, verse 13, go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the, Lord ang is the Lord's anger that burns against us because those who have gone before us have not obeyed the words of this book. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written there concerning us. So this passage, 2 Kings 22, verse 13, right before this happens, there is a split in the nation of Israel. Solomon was not a man after God's own heart. 
just like his father David was. And because of that, God said, not in your time, but after you die, the nation will be split into the northern and the southern kingdom, Israel and Judah. And Josiah is the king of Judah. He becomes king over Judah at seven years old. And the kings of Judah before Josiah had all been wicked. They had all been worshiping other idols, worshiping other gods. And because of that, God was showing, trying to show his people, trying to show the Israelites, the, the nation of Judah, come back to me. The way that you're living is not righteous. And you're seeing all this death and destruction because you're worshiping the wrong God. And then Josiah goes into the, tip, into the temple and he goes in and he, um, he fixes it up and makes some constructions and, and, and someone finds one of the old books of the law and Josiah says, oh no, we have been going about this all wrong. How dare we worship these other gods? Josiah was a righteous man. He found the book of the law and he said, you know what? I think this is so important that I'm gonna gather all of the people of Judah in 2 Kings 23 verses one through three. He, it says, the king called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the prophets, all the people from the least to the greatest. He read in, the he in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the temple of the Lord. The king stood by the pillar and he renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord and to keep his commands, statutes and decrees with all his heart and with all his soul, thus confirming the words of the covenant written in this book. Then all the people pledged themselves to the covenant. Why did we stop doing that? Josiah saw that the book of God, the word of God, the scripture was so powerful. Why? God gave us this book for a reason. And we as a culture have taken it for granted. There are millions of people on this planet that do not have this book in their language. They don't have it readily available. This is a blessing and this is a gift. Point number one. God's word is powerful, it is authoritative, and it is living. Josiah saw that this was not just a book of laws and commands, it was not just a book of moral stories and regulations, no, it was a powerful, authoritative, living word that God uses to speak to you and to me. He said, we have failed as a nation because we are no longer reading it together corporately. We are no longer reading it as a, as a whole, as a body. We have missed out. So I'm gonna gather everyone together and we're gonna read this book together because it's powerful, because it's life-changing, because God gave it to us for a reason, because it is God-inspired. It is the words of God on paper, and I know that my life and the lives of all the people of Judah can be changed if we gather together and read the word of God. That is the same for you and the same for me, just as it was the same for them. It is a powerful and authoritative living word of God. Each individual word on this page holds weight. I know that there's a lot of debate as to whether or not we have very, very accurate scripture to what the authors intended. But this right here, the English translation of your Bible, no matter the translation, has been being, being worked on for 2,000 years. I think it's pretty close. So if that's what's holding you back, then you need to check your heart. And I know that this is convicting. I know because I'm speaking from my own heart. These are things that I have gone through, that I have struggled with. But if you want to live an abundant life, if you want to live an abundant life that, that God works in and uses and gives joy and peace, and you take this seriously and you recognize that the life that you live right here on this earth is powerful and meaningful, you need to recognize that this book holds weight. Each individual word was inspired by God. 
it holds weight and it is, is powerful. Take it as it is. Treat it like it truly is the word of God, because it is. It's not just a collection of moral stories, but it is a culmination of salvation history. This author, uh, Michael Horton, he, pu he puts it really, really well. He says that the gospel, this story that's, that's found in this Bible, that's basically what the Bible is. It's, the, it's the, the collection of stories that make up the gospel. This Bible, this, this gospel that we hear is not just a warm feeling in our hearts when we decide to give our lives to Christ. It's not just a, a, a fiery soul, a, a, you know, a lot of motivation that we feel after we leave when a conference this weekend. No, the gospel is a series of events that have collected together historically to give the gospel even more weight. And you cannot experience the gospel fully unless you read it. You cannot understand what God has done for you unless you read about it, right? The culmination of salvation history is Jesus Christ dying on the cross for you and for me and raising again. And a lot of us know that story by heart, but do you know everything else? Right here, I have it open to Matthew because this is what I'm reading in my quiet time. Look at all the content before Matthew. This has meaning, this has weight. This contributes to the rest of the story that we read in the New Testament. Everything that God has done from the beginning of time until now is for a reason. Every story, every miracle, every death, every life that is lived, God used for a reason and it, and it contributes to this story and we don't understand the weight of it. We don't understand God's love and mercy and grace on our lives until we understand the whole story. So read the Bible because it is powerful, it is authoritative, and it is living. It's not just a book of moral stories or laws or regulations. It is a culmination of, of what we believe as Christians. And it is a testament to the love that God has had for you. He didn't just have mercy on you when Jesus Christ died. Yes, that was the greatest event of all but he also had mercy on us in every other thing that happened in this book. This is a book of God's love. This is a book of, of God's grace and mercy for us. So that's point number one. Point number two, God's word grows us spiritually and it fills us with wisdom. If you open up to a random page in the Bible, I'm sorry to to break it to you, but it's not gonna tell you what college you need to go to, right? You open up to Leviticus, and Leviticus is not gonna tell you the girl to date or the, the guy to spend your time with. It's not gonna give you exact answers. But the Bible tells us what we need to know to go about our lives. The Bible may not tell you that you shouldn't date that guy, but it will tell you what kind of guy you should look for. The Bible may not tell you that you shouldn't date that girl, but it will tell you what a godly woman looks like. The Bible may not tell you what college to go to or what classes to take or what friends to surround yourself with, but the, God, but the Bible is filled with wisdom and truth that help you make those decisions. You know in your heart when you read the Bible that that college is not honoring to him because that college is not what God wants for your life. That, those friends that, that you have are not honoring to him, are not speaking life into you because friends according to scripture should be very different. So you open up to Jude and Jude's not gonna tell you to break up with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. But maybe the scripture will tell you the kind of people that you should surround yourself with. And then you realize, huh, maybe I shouldn't be around them anymore. If you're struggling with a decision, I guarantee you the Bible can help you out. It can. Are you struggling with your walk with Christ? Are you battling with whether or not you can hear, hear from him? Are you struggling with your relationship with him because you feel like you're not close to him, but you're not diving into his word? 
God's primary way of speaking, point number three, is scripture. He speaks through us first through scripture. He speaks in many different ways, but, but guys, this is the word of God on paper, right? Like, wrap your mind around that, okay? If you feel like God isn't speaking to you, open this book. I'm serious. It has changed my life. I used to battle with whether or not I should read this every day. I looked at it as a chore. I looked at it as a responsibility. I felt like if I don't read my Bible every single day, then God's not going to love me. That Then I'm not, I'm not living up to his expectations. I'm not, I'm not being the person that God wants me to be. And I was reading out of guilt. And because of that, every time I, I, I thought of an excuse or thought of something else to do, instead I'd do that. Because I would rather spend my time hanging out with friends or I'd rather spend my time on, on TikTok or YouTube or I'd rather spend my time on even good things like doing homework or going to school or, I don't know, spending time with friends. There's a lot of things that you could do instead of reading your Bible. But if you want to live an abundant life where God speaks to you time and time again, then you need to read the book that he wrote for us. You need to read the book that he wrote for us. Don't expect God to speak to you if you're not reading the words that he has already spoken to you. This is a cheat code to life. This is the front of the box on a, on a puzzle piece set, right? When you do a puzzle, you look at the picture on the front and you say, okay, this is how I put the puzzle together. This is how I walk through life. This is how, okay, this piece goes here, this piece goes here, and I'm gonna look back at the picture on the puzzle box. Okay, this one goes here. That is the Bible. It is the, it is the cheat sheet that we have to understanding God better and understanding how to walk in life. Spend five, ten minutes a day just, just reading it. Please. I know that it's hard. I know that it's difficult. But spend time in the Word. Are you struggling with your walk with Christ? Do you feel like you can't hear from Him? Do you feel like you're not close to Jesus? Well, go where He wants to meet you, because He wants to meet you right here. If you're not willing to spend 10 minutes of your day reading the words that he specifically inspired someone else to write for you, then why would he speak to you outside of it? God wants to speak to a willing heart who wants to hear. Let those who have here listen. I mean, let those who have ears listen. So have ears to hear God. And if you want to hear him, then open his word. It is a power, powerful word, sharper than any double-edged sword. That is figurative language, but it's also real. It's real. Reading God's word, point number four, helps us to grow closer to him. This book is it's a story of his character, it's a story of his wisdom, it's a story of his sovereignty, it's a story of his justness, his grace and his mercy. This book is about God. We were having a group uh, the other night, I'm, I'm here with my um, group over here, y'all wave, I love them very much. Um, we, were, we were having a group the other night and um, one of my friends, he said, that he was talking to one of his mentors um, about his walk with Jesus. And his mentor looked at him and said, if you had a book on um, the girl that he was dating at the time, on all of her life, and you could read it to better understand her, to better understand how to pursue her and, and to be a good boyfriend to her, be a good friend to her, would you read it? 
And he said, absolutely I would. And his mentor looked at him and said, then read your Bible. This is the story of God, right? If we're pursuing a relationship with a friend, with a family member, with a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whoever else, you, you take time to get to know who they are. You sit down with them and you listen. You, you listen to their story, you listen to their struggles, you listen to their desires, their wants, their likings. You get to know their personality so you know what to say when you're with them and what not to say when you're with them. You know what to give them when you're feeling generous and you want to give them a gift. And you know what not to give them. You know when, um, if you're really close to them, you know when something's bothering them and you ask them what's up. You keep them accountable and you dive in every single day to try and get to know your friend better. And if we had a book on our best friend's life, if we had a book on our mom or our dad or our brother or our sister's life, if we had a book on our girlfriend or boyfriend's life, we would take the time to read it so that we can better understand who they are and grow cl closer to them. And let me tell you right here and now, this is a book on God. And if you want to pursue a personal relationship with him, if you want to grow closer and live an abundant life, then you have to grow closer to him and read his word. This is thousands, whatever, depending on your translation, 1,200 pages on God's character. And just like my mom said during the panel, we, we can't fully grasp who God is because our knowledge of him is finite and our sin clouds that understanding of him and the reading of scripture. But the great news is God said, you know what? You're a sinful human being, but I'm going to give a good inerrant word where you can get to know me as well as you can, as well as I'll allow. So if you want to live an abundant life, if you want to grow closer to Jesus, if you want to understand your Father in heaven who loves you so much and time and time again, day after day, does everything he can to get to know you better because he loves you so much. Let's reciprocate that effort. God is holding out his hands and looking at his child saying, I'm here. I'm here for you. Will you get to know me today? saying, son, daughter, I'm right here and I love you. Will you dive into my word? Will you read what I've written for you? We cannot fully understand, we cannot fully grasp what God is telling us if we don't understand who God is and what his character is like. Right? Going back to, it was like point number two. God's word grows us spiritually and fills us with wisdom. How are you supposed to go about a situation with your friends or your family and know the right thing to do if you don't know the scripture? If you feel like God is, is speaking something to you and you're struggling with whether or not that's from God or from yourself or from Satan, the only way you can truly know if it's from God is if it's congruent, if it, if it goes with, if it doesn't contradict the word of God. Let me tell you right here and now, God's not gonna tell you something that's not in this book. It might be unique to you, and it should be, but if you can't find it in this Bible right here, then it's not from God. And I can say that with full confidence. If you can't find a word of God that he put on your heart in scripture in some way, shape or form, or if it contradicts something else that God has written in this book right here, then it's not from God. And you're not gonna know that if you don't dive into scripture. So if you want to know what God's voice sounds like, if you want to be able to determine and discern between the voice of the world, the voice of the enemy, your own voice and God's voice, then you need to go to the Bible and listen to what God sounds like. Because if you can't discern between the voice of the world and the voice of scripture, then how are you going to know what God sounds like? You need to understand, you need to learn about a person when you're in a relationship. This is how we learn about God. Matthew 4, 1 through 11. This is just after Jesus was 
led into the wilderness, um, or during his, his uh, time in the wilderness, it's right after he got baptized by John the Baptist. He goes into the wilderness, um, the spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. After fasting for 40 days and for 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered it, answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then Satan, the devil, took him to the holy city and he had him stand on the highest point in the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give to you if you bow down and you worship me. But Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan. For it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. Jesus, who came down as a man, was tempted by Satan himself. And what did Jesus use? What did Jesus do when Satan offered literally the world to Jesus Christ and said, you can have all of it. If you just get down on a knee and say, I worship you, Satan, you can have all of it. And yes, he was Jesus, but he was, he was God, but he was also man. So that means he was tempted just the way that, that you are tempted and just the way that I am tempted. Just as Hebrews 4 says, he was a God, he was God that came down as man and experienced everything that we experienced so that we can have a high priest who sits beside the Father interceding on our behalf, who understands what we go through. He was tempted by Satan himself. And what did he use to combat that temptation? He used the word of God. If you were struggling in battle, if you were struggling with temptation, if you were struggling to live out the abundant life that God wants to give you, go to the word of God for help. Read the words on this page and see what God has to say. It'll help you, it'll bless you, it'll make a difference in your life. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, all scripture is inspired by God, profitable for teaching and reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Other translations say, God breathed. I know that I've said this point a lot, but I just don't know if people understand and can grasp this concept. This book was, was, in, it was inspired by God, written by human hands, but each individual word on this page was from the Lord, right? Each individual pa page, each individual word, each individual verse, everything you read is from your Father in heaven that created everything that you see. And if that same God, the most powerful, important, sovereign being, said that this was important, then I think it is. That the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. If you want to live an abundant life, if you want to grow in your relationship with God, if you want to grow closer to Jesus Christ and the life that he has for you, dive into the word. The word is powerful. The word is important. The word is authoritative. It is inspired by God. It helps us grow spiritually, gives us wisdom. The word is important. God, thank you for this afternoon. Um.
God, I, I, I preach this message from a posture of humility because I understand that this is something that I have struggled with my entire life. But you have had mercy on me time and time again. And now my love for your scripture is indescribable. Thank you. Thank you for blessing us with a, a book that tells us more about you, that tells us how to live and tells us how to, how to grow and how to walk in faith. And I hope all of you, if I've preached this, receive it well, know that I'm not speaking down in any way, shape, or form. I'm your brother, probably your age, maybe even younger than you. I'm only a freshman in college. I'm not that much older. But I just want to share what's changed my life. I just want to share how God has worked in my heart. And I am by no means saying that I have it all together or all figured out. I don't, I promise. But please give it a chance. Please give it a chance. So God, thank you for today. And thank you for this opportunity to gather together and worship you and love you and um, be convicted, but also celebrate and be joyful. That we have a Father in heaven who loves us that would be willing to die for us. And then raise again three days later, send his own son to do so and to take on the burden that we deserve, to take on the, the weight that we deserve, the punishment that we deserve. And then to raise again and forgive us. And to give us the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of your word. Lord, I pray that you would keep us safe as weather comes in. Um, and I ask that tonight, God, you would move powerfully. We love you so, so much. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done. And thank you for what you're going to continue to do. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Guys, I love you a lot. Um, and again, I want to repeat that I'm not speaking down in any way. I speak to you out of love and out of my own conviction. Um, so I hope that you took notes. I hope that this was powerful and encouraging. Um, hopefully the list is up on the screen of the passages that I used. Um, if not, can we put it up there? I want you guys, I want to challenge you guys that, um, to, to look through these passages and figure out how they apply to your life, okay? They're powerful. They're from God. Look through them. Look through them with your group. Look through them with your friends and look through them on your own and ask God, because he will speak to you through his word, how they apply to your life. You guys